Hello? Sorry, I'm going to disturb your uh, discussion. I'm going to give a talk uh, right now, and I'm going to disturb people trying to sleep. So now that if I'm too boring, you may get to sleep. So that may be the case. So my name is Billy Carper. Uh, I'm from Montreal. You can call me Fred. I'm the head of developer relations at Mache. So what does developer relations do? I'm a technical evangelist, so my job is to talk to developers, talk to people like you who will become software engineering, trying to share my passion about technology, and at Mache, as you probably know now, if you were there uh, yesterday, we have an API marketplace, which you can use some API and win some prizes during the hackathons. So uh, today I'm not going to do a technical talk, but that's going to be super useful for the rest of your life. So you may want to pay attention, or no, if you want to continue to code. But still, um, what's going to happen when you're going to finish school? It's going to look like this. Everybody will have the same courses. Everybody will try probably the same technology. But you want to differentiate yourself. You want to be able to get that cool job. You want to be able to get that cool internship. But you're competing with everybody else in the room, everybody else in our university, and everybody else everywhere, because there's a lot more remote working, culture, and companies. So you need to find a way to get out of the crowd. How you can stand out from everybody that is coding, everybody that has the same kind of skills, everybody that has the same experience. And there's something called personal branding. It sounds a little bit selfish, it sounds a little bit centric to yourself, but at the end of the day it is. But that's going to be super useful for the rest of your life, for the rest of your career, even for your personal life. So this next 40 minutes is going to be really about, uh, about personal branding. So what does that mean? Can you recognize that brand? Pepsi? Yeah, so this is not a real logo. This is a logo made with tree circle. It's kind of closer to the real logo. But you were able to recognize it. How about this one? Harley Davidson. How many of you have Harley Davidson at home? Nobody. No? How many of you are in like huge motorcycle fun? Like two people? But all the room were like, oh, this is Harley Davidson. This is not a logo. If you look at the web, this is not a logo. So this is an artist, a designer that decided to take some circle and try to review a lot of logos. But everybody was able to understand, or mostly everybody got it and say, okay, this is Harley Davidson. Why? Because this is a well-recognized brand. When you take Arlay, you take quality, you take those big choppers that make a lot of noise, you maybe think about like motors and, and crime, so this is not that good for your brand. But you think about those things, because that brand is well-recognized. Even if you're not a motor, uh, motorcycle fan, even if you don't have one, you recognize that brand. What about, what is the best computer brand? For you, that's yeah, Mac, all the apples for you, I go care, the pro, and hazes, do you like your hazes? So, <laughs> not, every, not every time I saw some of your hazes, some Dell. So, at that question, Hellenware, pretty powerful laptop for gamers. So, this question may be different from one person to the other, but you all have the best answer possible for you. For you, it's not because this is what you have, this is what's working well for you. For you, you know, it's just it's like, yeah, okay, good, and a couple ways, and it's so specific to you. But still, those are great brands, and you're not going to be the only one going to say Apple, you're not going to be the only one going to say Tesla, or going to say Healthware. So, personal branding is a little bit the same. It's to take some expertise, take some branding about yourself, and be that person. Managing that brand. So, personal branding, I really like that quote from uh, Paul Irish. Uh, this is a technical evangelist at Google, a uh, real nice guy. He's uh, advocating Google Crown. And he basically wrote on um, some of his slides personal branding is the art of consistently presenting online and offline the essence of how you stand out from the crowd. And this is what personal branding is it's about you, it's about yourself. It's about who you are. 
if you're on bad days, even if you look like that guy, yeah, you're angry, or you have really a bad person, or people see you as that person that is always mad, all those things. So it's really about you from the good side to the bad side of you. It's about who you want to be. Not about lying, it's not about lying about yourself. But okay, right now you're studying about you want to be a software engineer. Maybe you want to be a Python developer, but you did not have any courses, Python courses at school. But you want to be a Python developer, so your brand can be around that thing. Like, I want to be a Python developer. I want to be a Ruby developer. I want to be seen. What's the next step for you? What you know, your knowledge, but also what you don't know is part of your brand. What you're doing, running hackathons, going to hackathons, speaking at a conference maybe, maybe being in some uh, team at your schools. What you're doing is part of your breath, what you did in the past. You organize Akita. Maybe you're not going to be part of the second edition of the Akita, but you did one. And it's a lot more than anybody else that did not organize Akita. So even if five years you don't organize Akita anymore, you have been part of that kind of initiative. So it's really important. It's about your tribe, the people that you know, the people that know you, the friends you're going to make at school, the people you're going to meet at the academics. You never know the next person you're going to talk is going to be your manager, your boss, in 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> in, in like uh, 15 weeks, in like 3 years, in 10 years. You never know the person that are part of your network, where they're going to be part of your life at some point. What you like is part of your brand. What you don't like also, because we have social media right now, it's super easy to say, hey, I went to that store, the experience sucks. And you go on Twitter and you talk about it. It's super easy to do this. So it's part of yourself, it's part of your brand. So it's about everything that defines you from the personal side to the professional side to the school part of your life. So this is basically what is personal branding. It's really about yourself, what differentiates yourself from other people? But why should you care about personal branding? Because it seems, again, a little bit selfish. It seems about, like, hey, I need to promote myself. I need to get some visibility. But it's super important. So actually, it's not important. It's critical. It's really critical for many, many, many reasons. First, you already have a personal brand. People already define you. And make a test. Ask your colleague if you work, ask your uh, students in the room, people that know you, ask them what they think about you. On Twitter, on Facebook, write a status and say, hey, how do you define me? And you may be happy or not always happy with the answer you're going to get. You may be surprised about it. So you already have a brand, and you do this with other people. You judge people really quickly. Hey, I met you at Hackathon. I think you're a great coder. That may not be true. But what I saw was great, and I said, okay, this guy is a great coder. You do this with all the people. So you already have a brand, you need to take the ownership of that brand. Because if you don't manage your brand, other will do for you. And you may not be happy with the brands or the tag they put to you. Let me tell you quickly about my personal story. I've been in the IT uh, world for, I don't know, 12, 13, 13, 15 years, I don't know. A couple of years. I was what I call an average developer. I think it was good. I was not the best out there, but I was good at what I was doing. And I learned something that this world called technical evangelists exists. What I'm doing today, talking about technology, sharing my passion about technology. I say I want to do this, but I did not have the skills, all the skills. I did not have anything to prove to company that I was able to do that job. So I started to work on my brand. And it worked so much that at some point Microsoft approached me. Whether you like Microsoft or no, whether you are about open source or no, Microsoft approached me. It's pretty good. I need to brag about it. So, and why? Because I work on my personal brand. So I was able to be a technical evangelist at Microsoft, covering all Canada, went to conferences, to Akatan. It was pretty amazing. When I decided to leave Microsoft, Mozilla approached me. So I got a job at Mozilla. And, and it seems funny to work at Microsoft and Mozilla, but I was doing open source at Microsoft. Makes sense. So, when I joined Mozilla, I was traveling all across the world to do conferences. This is pretty amazing. That was a really good perk for my job. 
So I went from average developer to technical evangelist Microsoft covering Canada to senior technical evangelist at Mozilla covering all, all the world. I went to, I, I probably in one year I did like 12 countries. It was pretty amazing. And now I'm leading a team at Mache. So there's always the next step. It's not because I'm better than anyone else. It's just because I worked on my brand. And that gave me some visibility, that gave me a great network, that gave me the opportunity to do what I like every day. And when you're going to go out from school, that's only the beginning. You're going to have like another 30 to 40 years, and maybe 50 years, to work. You better really like what you do. So my goal in life is to wake up on Monday and don't care because it's Sunday. So this one personal branding gave me the opportunity to achieve. So it's not about being that rock star. Or maybe it is. Maybe it's your goal. One thing I learned the hard way is that you're not indispensable. Even if you think that, oh, I'm going to get that job in that big company, so I'm going to have like the security of working in that company, not happening. There is no more security. Because you're competing with everybody else in the world, with the remote culture. So tomorrow, company can close. That happened to me. I lost my job, the company closed. It was like, oh my god, I don't have any more jobs. I need to pay my bills. That happened. Maybe they're going to close your department. Maybe they're going to find something better than you. Is something possible? There's also new opportunities. Maybe there's a, you want to go from junior to senior. Maybe you want to find an internship. Maybe you want to find that cool job in that super light gaming company that you really want to work for. You're going to need to work on your brand to get those two opportunities. Maybe you're going to want a better paycheck. I mean, that happened in the beginning, but when you're going to have like, more experience at some point, there's nothing wrong with wanting more money. If it's what you want, you can do it. You're going to need to, have to find a new job, to work in a new company, to reach a new level. Personal branding is going to help you to do this. Maybe it's about recognition. You want people to, to tell you that, hey, I saw that open source project that you put on GitHub. I use it every day. This is amazing. That's saving tons of time. This is good also. Maybe it's about, hey, people recognize you when you go at humans. Recognition is not a bad thing. In my own opinion. So that could be, uh, that could be something. Or maybe right now, because you're still a school, you just want to get a job, an internship. The thing is that right now, there is a lot of jobs. It's a good time to study in tech. There's a lot of jobs out there. There's not enough people to get those jobs. So it's a really good time for you, in my time, I feel old when I say this, but like, like 12 years ago, 15 years ago, it was on the other side. It was super hard to find a job because like too many people went in the IT industry and not enough job was available. So it was super hard to find a job. So you deserve to be successful. Taking the pose. You deserve to be successful no matter what successful means for you. I gave some usual example of what people want to achieve, what people want to do. But there, like, no matter the reason you have, no matter the goal you have in your career, you want to change the world, you want to save life, do it. But personal branding will help you to achieve that goal. So how can you do this? First, you need to define that goal. I give you some usual example of the usual goals that people have. Again, no matter the goal, define what is your goal and make it quantifiable. And uh, Something you're going to be able to that is the fire in time. I want to be the tech lead of Google Chrome. This is huge. But you can't do it. Why are you going to say, okay, I want to do this in five years? And yeah, what's the next step? I'm not going to take that job in the first place. So, first thing is going to be like to find a developer job maybe at Google. So, click in. Once it's done, okay, I want to move to the senior level. After this, okay, I want to move to the Google team. And oh, once there is an opportunity, okay, I may lead that team. So define goals with specific moments in time and things you can basically say it's done, or it's not done, or I need to change, or I need to improve. Making more money is not a good goal. Making twice the money I'm making today is a great goal because I can quantify that goal. I can know if, I, if I'm successful or if I fail. Define your brand. So why I am different from other people? What is my little something that other people don't have? And this one is kind of tricky. My brand, I'm a technical evangelist. There's not a lot of technical evangelists in Canada, but there's a lot in the United States. I'm not the only technical evangelist. 
to the silver one. What's the strategy shape? My style from your people? I'm always in James' t shirt, I was making jokes, my hair, I have my own side of presentation with big images and all those kind of things. So there's a lot of things that make myself a little bit unique compared to other people. Doesn't mean that I'm the only one with that expertise, but you have some uniqueness in my graph. You need to define who you are. And that may be a super weird question at your age, like where are you? But if you take the time to really think who you are, understand your weakness, your strength, things you like, don't like, if you really take the time to sit down and just think about it, that could be an interesting to do, an interesting activity to do. You're going to learn a lot about yourself because you're going to take the time to realize what's happening to who you are. Who do you want to be? I was saying that I went from developer to evangelist. One task of the evangelist is to do public speaking. So when I decided that I want to be an evangelist, I said, oh my god, I need experience in public speaking. So I find a small conference in Montreal. We're getting a chance to people that were starting. I did the talk there. It went well. The first thing I did after my talk, I went on, my, I went on Twitter and I changed my bio. And I had a public speaker. I was not the most experienced out there. But I had the talk, so it was true. I was, I was now a public speaker. So this is who I wanted to be. Now, today, I can say that in the last three years, I gave more than one of the talks. Now I have a little more experience than I've than I had in the past. So I was not lying, but I was a public speaker. Be attentive, all the time, every time. It's super important. If you start to lie, you start to trick yourself, either online or offline, you're going to have that big punch coming back in your face at some point. That's not going to work. Or that's going to work for a small amount of time, but at some point you're going to fail. So always be attentive. And it's super important. I was telling you about my jeans and t-shirt. It's not quite common in the tech industry. But I did all my interviews in jeans and t-shirt. Microsoft, Mozilla. If they didn't like me, that's not going to work. I'm not going to go like uh, with a nice pen and a tie all day to work. So if you don't like me in the interview process, this is with the person you're going to work at some point. If you go on my blog and you read blog posts, sometimes I'm really straightforward the kind of blog posts I do. But this is me. This is my way of thinking, my way of writing, my way of thinking. I'm always true to myself. So the first thing I do when I do an interview is say, go read my blog. Go check my blog. If you don't like what it's there, we're not going to work together. It's not always easy to do this at the beginning because you don't want to close the door. But once you get your brand out there, once you get more experience, it's a lot more easier to always be consistent or be more honest about what you do. Do a big shift. This is my mantra. This is my day to day thing. Keep in mind, I always try to do a big shift. Do what you love. Manage your brand around what you love. If it's not around what you love, even if it's like a cool new thing, if you find a niche that would be like super amazing, if you don't like it, that's not going to work. You're not going to have the passion. You're going to fail some way, that's really not going to work. So do what you love and make it hard. Make hard out of it. And make your own rules. There's nothing wrong to make your own rules. So don't accept no for an answer. Don't accept the closing door. Not again. Go see. Ask people. There's a lot of people that wait for that, that opportunity to happen. If you wait, there's two things that can happen. Maybe you're going to have that offer. Maybe not. If I take the time and I ask that someone about that something that I want, I may have no as an answer, but at least I will know that no was the answer. But I may have a lot more chance to get what I'm looking for. So, really, how day to day, more concretely, how I can achieve that brand, how I can manage that brand, how I can take the ownership of that personal brand. So, there is one secret ingredient, and it's the visibility. You can be the best software developer out there. You can be, you can have like the best product. If nobody knows about it, it's not gonna work. If it's only in your garage, that's not gonna work. If you are not on Google or any other search engine, you are not existing. We're living in a world where the web, the real life, kind of cross together. So do that exercise, go to your browser, try to search for yourself. And you're going to find some amazing result or not. 
But I was hiring people. I was looking for people on the web to get some information. I was just stalking people, but I wanted to see what, what you're doing on Twitter, what you're doing on Facebook, just to know those people a little more. And having that visibility, visibility is going to help you at a different level. Start a blog. There's a lot of people that say blogs are dead, podcasts are dead, all this shit are dead. I don't think so. I'm blogging since a couple of years, a mini blog, company blog, I have a whole personal blog, and that brings me a lot. And my blog is not the most visible of all blogs, but I got book offers with my blog. I got job interviews with my blog. I use my blog, as I said, in any interview, I'm like, go to my blog. You're going to know a lot about me. You're going to see if you want to work every day with me, because we don't want to. So blog is really interesting. That's going to give you also a, a, a way to show your expertise. In my case, it's not a technical blog. I my technical blog posts and the company blogs. Mine is more personal about different things. But it's great also to have a technical blog. That's going to give you another way to show your expertise to people. Be on social media. I don't think there's an issue here. I didn't talk with people a little more older who are like, oh, Twitter is like posting a picture of your toast in the morning. Yes, and I'm doing this sometimes. The same picture of my food, but it's not just about this. When I was a freelancer, I got some job, uh, not job offer, but I just got some potential customers from Twitter, people I never met before. They were just trying, just following me on Twitter and were uh, offering me uh, some, some good contract. So it's really interesting to be there. Have a LinkedIn profile, even if you don't need it, need it right now. Create a LinkedIn profile. Resumes are dead. LinkedIn is like it's a place where people go to find you. And again, there are a lot of HR people that found my profile on LinkedIn and offered me jobs just because I had a profile with right information. Speak at conferences. There's a lot of conferences that get access to new speakers. That can be terrifying to speak in front of people. The first one is the worst. Once you've done the first talk in front of people after this, not that it's super easy, but it's a lot easier. And it's great because once you are in front of the people, you are the expert. You get a lot of visibility. You get a lot of people that are going to know you, that are going to see you. And that's going to be great for your brand. And there's a lot of opportunity for your company also when you speak uh, in the behalf of your company. Start a user group. I was talking with a friend living here. And he told me that there's not a lot of user group in London. I think there is an opportunity to start something. I don't know, maybe a Ruby is a group. There's a lot of Ruby enthusiasts. If you don't find what you're looking for, start it. It's not that complicated to run a user group. I run three in Montreal. And it's great. We're meeting monthly with other developers. That helps your network. That helps you get some visibility. That helps you to find interesting people. Think open source. There's nothing better than having a project on GitHub or Bitbucket or Native. You put your project there, this is a great way to show to other people your skills. This is a great way to create contact. This is a great way to start something that's going to change the world, that's going to change the industry. There's a lot of people that say that GitHub is a new uh, LinkedIn, a new resume. I don't believe in that much, but it's again, it's a great resource when you talk to someone at, at HR in the company, you can send your uh, GitHub uh, profile, and I think this is quite interesting. Help other people. There's some people that like or don't, doesn't like Stack Overflow. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's probably one of the biggest tech forum out there for developers, software engineers. When you have a tech issue, you go there, you ask a question. Uh, go help people. You're going to build your profile. You're going to get some points. There's a gamification part. There's also the fact that if you get a lot of points, it's because you help a lot of people. It's probably because you have that expertise. Try to, if you don't want to take too much time to code after work, after schools, because you have other things, you have your passion in life, you can still help to uh, fill some bug. For example, in Smart Fox, you go to Bugsla, you fill some bug if you found something, you go to Handyam, it's a little developer network, uh, this is a great wiki when it comes to HTML, such as JavaScript, you go there, you help fix one page, two pages, and this is your resume, that's this your CV. You did it, it's great. For those of you that have design skills, which I don't, there's Dribble, Dribble B. You go there, you did a great website, you did something amazing with a great UI, post it, create a profile there. It's a good way to show to people 
that you're doing great UI. Do a certification. I know right now most of you are at school, you, doesn't want, you don't want to go study for something else. But once you're going to work, or what's, once you're going to have like that expertise in system technology, there's a lot of company or system technology that give you the opportunity to do your certification. By doing this, you just pass the test, and you're going to mention that, hey, okay, you know that technology, or you know how to study that technology. Some company doesn't really care about certification. For, for summer, it's super important. It's part of your culture. And worst case, you lose nothing to get a certification. It's usually around 100 bucks, and it's it, it probably worth it depending on which kind of technology you're using and which kind of industry you're going to go. Get industry recognition. I know on the Microsoft side because I used to work there, but there is uh, what they call the MVP, the uh, Most Valuable Professional, and it's uh, basically an award or recognition from Microsoft about people having a specific expertise with one of their specific technology, but being also well involved in the industry. And this is great. You can say, hey, Microsoft or Mozilla has some, I think Oracle has some, and you're gonna say, hey, they recognize me as one of the experts in my community, as one of the person really involved in my community. So super interesting, great assets to have to your resume, to your personal friend. Most important tips, if you have to remember one thing from that whole presentation, it's network, network, and network. And once you think you network enough, network again. Talk again to people, meet people, meet new people. I told you, you never know when someone you talk to right now could be a potential employer in two, three years, could be a potential customer if you start your own company, if you do some freelance. You never know how. That person is going to be able to put you in contact with another person, but it's not just about you. They never know how you're going to be able to help them, maybe at some point. And it's super important. I've got job offers from people that I met at a conference. I was just like, hey, hi, where is this? And we talk about like weather and a lot of other things. And they're just there. And I never thought that that person could be a potential employer. And when I was looking for a new job, I was like, crap, I remember you from that conference. We like to talk about that job. So networking, the, the networking part of person is the biggest asset you can have. Meet people, don't be afraid to talk to people, don't be afraid to go to user group. Instead of when you go to that conference and you arrive like or there's break time, instead of taking your coffee and, and, and waiting for the next presentation to start, meet with people, chat with people. It's super, 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 and super important. So what do you need to Think about your personal branding. Now it's too late. Should have started this 30 years ago. No, I'm joking. But it's like a resume or a CV. It's too late to start to create your CV when you need to find a job. It's too late to update your LinkedIn profile when you need to find a job. It's too late to work on a personal brand when you need a personal brand. So start to think about it. Start to think about your goals. Start to define your brand. And it's, it's an investment. Yes, I'm going to take you some time to blog, to go on social media, to network people. But it's an investment that will pay. And an investment that will pay a lot. And you can start to do this right now. Yes, you don't have a lot of time. So all the courses, all the exams, have friends, family, want to party every weekend. I get it. But there's many other opportunities where you can start to take about your breath, and when you can start to have the wind ground and take your virtue of it. So remember, you are the expert of someone else. You have a little something that other people don't have. Find that little something, find how you can differentiate yourself from other people, and really, really work on this. Try to leave a mark on everything you do. Everybody can be average. Everybody can deliver an average project. Everybody can deliver an average homework. Everybody can do an average application during a hackathon. Do something great. Be the best. Leave your mark on anything you do. So we only scratch the surface. Uh, there's a lot more I would like to talk to you about personal branding. But my, my goal today was really to try to spark something. Just like, hey, wow, OK, that's true. I have a brand. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can be useful, but 
brand doesn't seem like a bad guy, so maybe he's right. So maybe you're going to start to think about your brand. Maybe you're going to start to think about getting some visibility network a little more. And uh, super selfish promotion. For those of you that want to know more, I wrote a book at Apress called Success in Programming. How to get the function power and happens through personal branding. I didn't want to choose the title. But uh, it's a cheap book, a quick read, and you can know more about it. Um, I want to do great copies, but I just forgot some copies to give to people. So I think I have still a little bit of time for the question, if you have some. If you're too shy to just think about it for the future, feel free to send me an email at harper at oocz.net. I'm a whole guy. Emails are still the best way to contact me. But I'm on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Feel free to hand me on LinkedIn. You never know how being in contact on LinkedIn is going to be useful for you or even for me. Uh, I'm going to put that presentation and the recording of the presentation on autofoodforzone.net uh, probably during next week. So if you're missing something, if you want to, to like listen to it on the part that you missed or because we're coding, feel free to go there. So that's it.